Welcome to this episode of Monday Morning Joe. I'm Dr. Mark Gomez. Monday Morning Joe is a quick hitting coffee talk style four episode series on what you need to know about multi-cancer early detection or MSET tests. The goal of this segment is to provide you with a better understanding of the criteria used to validate MSET testing and how these tests compare to current guideline recommended cancer screening modalities. In the last episode, we talked about the science behind multi-cancer early detection. Check it out if you haven't already. Before we begin, please remember to subscribe to the Exchange See Me YouTube channel and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any new episodes in the series. All right, let's get started. As a reminder, last time we discussed the fact that there are four cell-free DNA multi-cancer early detection tests, or IMSED tests, that have received FDA breakthrough device designation. Those are CancerSeq, now known as CancerGuard, Oversee MCDBT, CanScan, and the Gallery Test, which is the only one that is commercially available under a CLIA waiver. Let's review the criteria used to validate MSED tests in clinical trials. We have sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, and negative predictive value. The sensitivity is a test's ability to detect a true positive sample, aka a patient that has a particular cancer. Specificity is the test's ability to detect a true negative. Example, a patient who does not have that particular cancer. We also have positive predictive value and negative predictive value. Positive predictive value is really that patient that's sitting in front of you. They have a positive test. What is the probability that they truly have a positive diagnosis? And negative predictive value is the percentage of all negative samples that are true negatives. That person that's sitting in front of you, that they have a negative result, like the likelihood that they have a true negative, that they don't have cancer. So for example, a 95% specificity would produce five false negative tests for every 100 patients who have cancer. A 95% specificity would result in five false positive tests for every 100 patients that do not have a cancer signal detected. Let's now discuss the clinical trial data demonstrating the high specificity and sensitivity of the available and investigational MSED tests that have received FDA device breakthrough designation. As you can see, these tests have high sensitivity that's aggregate, but the key thing is that they have high specificity. And why is that important? It's important to have high specificity because we minimize the false positives and thereby reducing the diagnostic odyssey of unnecessary tests and workup. We also don't want to lead to overdiagnosis or overtreatment. Let's chat about why positive predictive value and negative predictive value are important measures related to the clinical utility of the test and how the different MSEDs compare. While high PPV is important to reduce unnecessary workup, overdiagnosis, and overtreatment, and a high negative predictive value is critically important to reduce the probability of missing potentially curable cancers. What about determining the cancer signal of origin, or CSO? And how accurate are these tests at identifying a CSO? Well, this is important because it allows us to localize where we need to look. If a patient has a cancer signal of origin, we can focus our diagnostic efforts on that particular tissue. In the real world, we are seeing a cancer signal origin of higher than 91% accuracy. Now, I know you're wondering, how do cell-free DNA-based MSED tests compare to our current guideline-recommended single-organ screening modalities? Well, let's take a look at screening mammography. Screening mammography has a positive predicted value of 4.4%, meaning that when that patient is in front of you with an abnormal mammogram, they only have a 4.4% chance that they truly have a cancer present. Well, contrast that with a person sitting in front of you who has a positive multi-cancer early detection test. The positive predicted value of that is much, much higher that we can tell that patient that there's a high likelihood that they truly have a cancer present. The addition of a cancer signal origin allows us to focus our diagnostic workup to that area of concern. There are many active 
multi-cancer early detection clinical trials that are currently enrolling, the Gallery Reach trial, which we'll talk about on a future episode of Monday Morning Joe, but this is a study that has been funded by Medicare to cover Medicare beneficiaries in underserved populations or seniors that live in underserved areas to get them involved in multi-cancer early detection. Multi-cancer early detection should be used to complement recommended screening paradigms, not in place of these current screenings. So here are some key take-home points. There are several criteria that are important to determine the efficacy of cancer screening tests, including specificity, sensitivity, positive predicted value, and cancer signal origin. Currently, there is one commercially available test in the U.S. that analyzes cell-free DNA methylation patterns, but there are several other tests that are in different stages of development but have received FDA device breakthrough designation status. A number of clinical trials with cell-free DNA-based multi-cancer early detection tests are ongoing and we await the results of these studies. Thank you for joining me today. As discussed earlier, please check back for new episodes on the Exchange CME YouTube page. Clinicians, nurses, and pharmacists can also visit exchangecme.com for free access to CME in a variety of therapeutic arenas. Thanks again. We'll see you on the next episode of Monday Morning Joe, where I'll discuss how to implement multi-cancer early detection in your clinical practice.